Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Million dollar Democrat bribe to sabotage Trump's Supreme Court pick just revealed. Guess who's paying? I don't watch politics in Maine much because the Republican there is Senator Susan Collins, who I consider to be a squishy moderate at best. However, she's our squishy moderate and the left is now attacking her. Even the most May states out there are now political battlegrounds it would seem. Leftists set up a crowdfunding campaign that has raised over $1 million as of last week for the opponent of Collins if she doesn't do as she's told. They are trying to bribe Collins into not voting for the confirmation of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Collins called it outright bribery and or extortion and she's right. Liberal activist groups have posted the campaign on the platform CrowdPack, garnering both supporters and critics. Senator Collins votes no on Kavanaugh and you will not be charged, and no money will go to fund her future opponent, the platform wrote. Senator Collins votes yes on Kavanaugh and your pledge will go to her opponent's campaign, once that opponent has been identified. Senator Susan Collins, Republican Maine, speaks with Supreme Court nominee Judge Brett Kavanaugh at her office, before a private meeting on Capitol Hill in Washington, August 21, 2018. Associated Press Here's a hot tip for the left here. You just ensured that you cannot bribe Senator Collins and she will make this move an election talking point that is really going to hurt you. If you play rough out in public, expect to get smacked for it. Collins' spokeswoman told The Washington Post it was extortion. And anybody who thinks these tactics would work on Senator Collins obviously doesn't know her, spokeswoman Annie Clark said in a statement. Senator Collins will make up her mind based on the merits of the nomination. Threats or other attempts to bully her will not play a factor in her decision making whatsoever. What a dumb move by the left. Chances are they just solidified Collins' seat and seated her the moral high ground here. I wonder who the brain trust was that came up with this lame idea? An ethics expert was quick to point out to the Washington Post that it may very well violate federal bribery statutes. Jeepers! I would certainly say so. Of course, for every ethics expert out there that gives a sane and correct evaluation of the situation, you will find a leftist loving, ethics challenged one that says the opposite. Jordan Lebowitz, who is a spokesman for the Citizens for Ethics and Responsibilities, told the Washington Post it doesn't rise to the level of bribery, because there's no agreement. It's just the way money and politics tend to work these days, he said. Ah, uh, no it's not. As far as an agreement, there does not have to be one to constitute extortion. A supporter who endorsed the campaign, Julie B., stated, women will stand together to protect our rights and what is right. So, let me get this straight. You will break the law to do what you consider is right? If you are breaking the law doesn't that argue that you don't know or don't care what is right? Just saying. The people of Maine are asking you to be a hero, Senator Collins, the campaign wrote, to stand up for the people of Maine and for Americans across the country. Every dollar donated to this campaign will go to your eventual Democratic opponent in 2020. We will get you out of office. Again, no they are not. Communists, leftists, and activists are and they aren't asking. They are bullying. These are the same people who sent Collins Washington office a three-foot-long cardboard cutout of male genitalia. Gross and disgusting. The obscenity, of course, was accompanied by profanity. Utah Republican Senator Orrin Hatch's office weighed in on the cutout via Twitter, the left's campaign to pressure Senator Collins has gone from threats of sexual violence against young staffers to actual sexual harassment, the tweet said. This is abhorrent behavior and, again, deserves to be roundly condemned from the right and left. Actually, Senator, there should be arrests over this unseemly behavior. Seriously. Stalking, threats, and harassment like this should be illegal even in the state of Maine. Someone should look into the legal statutes over this and act accordingly. Collins said one of the many voicemails stands out. When I have a caller who tells a young staffer in my office who does casework that he hopes she is raped and impregnated, we have really reached a new low, she said. That's one way of putting it. More threats were made. One incensed voter left a voicemail for Collins, which her office shared with USA Today, in which he repeatedly screamed insults while wondering how Collins could accept Kavanaugh's statement that he considers Roe v. Wade to be settled law when he was hand-picked by the Federalist Society specifically to overturn that decision. You will go down in history as the most naive person ever to be in Congress you, expletive, expletive, feckless, naive woman. The caller yelled. If you care at all about women's choice, vote no Kavanaugh. Don't be a dumb b-h, another male caller said. A letter sent to Collins' office warned that if she votes to confirm Kavanaugh every waitress who serves you is going to spit in your food, 
and that's if you're lucky you, expletive. Collins insists that she has not decided how she will vote and had more questions for Kavanaugh in the wake of his confirmation hearing. But if I were her, I would now definitely vote for Kavanaugh after all this. First off, he's way more than qualified, but secondly, the left hates him which is good enough for me. Twice. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.